Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in JE Advanced Solutions series which I call as Alpha and Omega of your preparation because it's the starting and ending of your preparation if you are seriously preparing for any of the JE examinations, okay? So here we take up a question which is controversial one from the JE Advanced 2020 paper which is paper two. There was a ray optics question on the face value of it. It looks like an oblique viewing question. Remember, it's an integer based question and there was a lot of furor among the students and teachers community when the preliminary key for the uh, question came up as three or four or five. So our idea is to learn the science behind the question and also whether it makes some sense or not. Okay, so let's move ahead. I call it as ambiguity one because 2020 paper, as far as I am concerned, um, is an overrated paper. It's not tough. It is just weird. And there are many ambiguities which I'll try to bring forward as we go along for the JE Advanced 2021. Okay, so let's move forward and see the problem statement, right, uh, that was given in the exam. <clears throat> Uh, remember, this was the first question of paper two, right? So when the student opens the screen, this is the first thing that they'll see. And it was an integer based question and also negative response, negative marks was given for the wrong response. Okay, right. So let's move forward. A large square container with thin transparent vertical walls and filled with water of refractive index four by three is kept on a horizontal table. A student holds a thin straight wire vertically inside the water 12 centimeters from its corner, as shown schematically in the figure. Looking at the wire from this corner, another student sees two images of the wire located symmetrically on each side of the line of sight, okay, as shown. The separation in centimeter between these images is. Okay, so this is the idea. So in case you are a new uh, student who are uh, who have not seen this problem before, so just give it a try for maybe three or four minutes and do come back for the explanation. Okay, so in case you are a regular visitor of this channel, uh, I've already produced a video on oblique viewing, which is nothing but the famous Irido 5.18 question, right? And uh, try to solve it in a very uh, elaborate manner to be a student friendly way of understanding the solution. Okay, so uh, just watch that video first. That was actually in thumbnail itself I wrote, a precursor to the JE Advanced 2020 optics problem. I took a long time to produce this video because I actually forgot uh, that I have not produced the video. So this is the time uh, someone has reminded me that I should come up with a solution of the 2020 uh, controversial question. Okay, so link of this particular solution is shared in the description below. And please uh, make sure you watch that one first because that would be helpful in understanding the present solution. So uh, assuming that you have watched it, uh, I'll take up a uh, important diagram from that video that we have already learned from. Okay, so this was the diagram that was presented to the uh, students in the Irodo 5.18 problem of uh, the channel. So if you understand very carefully, uh, the way the oblique viewing is done, imagine the object is here and this is the surface of refraction and the upper one is let's say air and the lower one is water. Then even though most of the times we draw a single ray like this to show the refraction and maybe the image to be seen here, we should understand that there are a bunch of rays that would be required to actually realize an image. A single ray can never give you a vision of an image. Okay, so actual diagram for each line that we draw, even in this video, should represent a differential bunch of rays. Okay, so even though I've drawn only two here, there is a bunch of rays, like a cone of rays that would come out with an angle of di, let's suppose. di is the differential value of the incidence i. And upon doing some calculus and calculations, you'll realize the image is actually formed here. Okay, right. And some students in that video in the comment sections told me that this diagram is not drawn to scale and all. This image has to be on the right side of it. Actually, remember in this Erodos problem, we were never worried about the X coordinate. It's only the Y coordinate that we were worried. So the diagram was just drawn like that. The calculus will give you whether the eye lies to the left or right. Even in that video at the end, I gave a practice problem for which the solution then requires the X coordinate. Okay, right. Even in this video, we are not worried whether I is on the right side of O or the left side of O. It is just that for a given O, and for a given angle of viewing, you'll only get one unique value or a position of I is what I want to suggest. Okay, so if I take up the results in that video directly that we solved for, 
Okay, so these are the results. Okay, so let me move slightly above. Yeah, so finally upon solving the Y prime, that is the depth of that viewing comes out to be this number, where Y is the original depth of the object divided by mu into cos R by cos I whole cube. In Irido, actually the only the value of R was mentioned. Okay, right. So that is the angle from which the I is viewing from the top. Okay, so that if you consider it as theta and use Snell's law to get rid of cos I in terms of theta itself, then you end up having, so replace Y and Y primes with H and H prime, that is the height, you end up getting this complicated function. So the idea is to tell ourselves that the height or the Y coordinate is pure function of theta for different angles of viewing. That means if the eye is moved to different positions and different angles of viewing, same object, I don't change the position of the object, I'll get different Y coordinates. What I didn't do in that video, now I'll write here, is that the X coordinate is also similarly going to be dependent on the angle of the viewing. So when you have one object placed at a certain distance from a surface and you are asked where is the image, you should be also asking the paper setter back in what direction I'm watching. The position of the image will be dependent on where the eye is and what is that angle as you could see in this problem. The answer is only unique when theta is given as one particular value. Okay, so with this gist, let's try to move forward and collect it in a diagram. So. Realizing the importance of location of I in oblique viewing, I tried to depict the whatever formula you got in the previous slide in a pictorial manner for easy understanding. Imagine this is air, this is water, and this is the interface. This is the object. Object is not moving anywhere. So as I said, there are a bunch of rays, right? I shaded those differential set of rays into different cases, okay? So if I view normally, then I watch it from here. This is the easiest formula that we do in our JE syllabus where we use, we take paraxial viewing and solve for problems, okay? Shift is uh, H into one minus one by mu. We end up getting those formulae for this case only. Whereas as I move the eye to new, new positions for the same object, the angle of the viewing changes, theta one, theta two, so on and so forth. And for some other rays, which are having a very large angle of incidence, total internal reflection takes place and you won't have any viewing on this side. Okay, so we'll also try to see whether the JE problem had this issue or not. Okay, so my whole idea is that theta one and theta two are going to, or theta in general, as you could see at the bottom of your screen, decides the location of the image for the same object. Okay, so let's try to apply this concept to the JE picture. Okay, so the JE question, if I take up, I know, uh, actual diagram have reduced the size. So this was the actual uh, cylindrical uh, container that was given I, I, with the square bottom. Okay, so from the top view you are watching. So unnecessary part I'm removing so that I can encapsulate everything in one page. Okay, so something like this. Now, uh, if the object is at a distance 12 centimeter and he has given this as the line of sight, you realize one very important thing, just like in our previous problem, if I take those bunch of rays, these are all, each single line are all bunch of rays, depending on where they hit and where they are going, the location of the eye will see the image of this at different positions, right? So even, now you may argue saying that in JE question, he never gave these eyes on the top. He gave the eye on this one. And if you realize carefully, he never mentioned the distance along this. Even for the two eyes that are drawn on that line in that question, you would get two different angles of viewing. Okay, even if you go very, very close also, you'll get a different angle of viewing. So on this line itself, depending on the distance, you'll end up having a different image which makes the problem unsolvable to an unique answer, especially in an integer based question. That's what I have written here. For two different eyes, right? So these two different eyes themselves, you end up having a different location of the images. Okay, so let's try to see what JE should have asked. Okay, so what were their initial thinking? Let's try to understand, okay? They wanted to have an integer answer. Okay, so one of the easiest problems would have been to actually place two different eyes here. Okay, so just watch carefully. 
even in the question there is a hint of that they have marked some circles depicting the images right and you could see if i draw a line joining them it looks like he said it is schematic diagram but i i i think we can actually extrapolate and say maybe maybe they are thinking on the lines of normal viewing which makes it a simple paraxial ray situation where if this is 12 this would have been 12 by root 2 depth from this surface and the shift would have been 12 by root 2 into 1 minus 1 by mu so this position and this position then which are two images for two different eyes so these two people cannot watch these two images simultaneously the, this person has to come all the way here and again view this one in normal uh, setting and then two images have to be just Uh, marked some in some manner, and then I one I two comes out to be three centimeter. My uh, initial guess is what this is what they would have wanted to ask in the um, integer based question. Okay, this I that they have given is as useless as the verifier of this particular question paper is my line of thinking. Okay, right. So this line of sight is definitely not going to give you one unique set of images. It depends on the distance. So remember, why I am being so critical of this particular question is that this is the first question of paper two. It's an integer-based question, and you have negative marks also for the wrong response. So just try to think what students would have undergone when they are having this kind of confidence-shattering experience at the start of the paper. okay so one very important lesson that both je and the students that have to learn is that if there is a key that is given like this this was the actual print out of the tentative key they, they gave initially that first question they gave it as 3 or 4 or 5 and finally it was changed to marks for all okay that is bonus right so what's the thought process of the people preparing this key i don't even understand okay so if you have made a mistake own up to it and try to correct it off okay right so the simple request to this uh, particular channel right i know we are not a very famous channel but whenever it reaches the people who are responsible for this kind of a paper setting we'll also talk to the students right what they should be doing in such problems okay proper verification of questions is needed you are just setting 36 questions per year right just try to compare it with the workload of a standard teacher who coaches or mentors students how many questions he prepares per year right and i think uh, the test series and all these things that are being prepared with lot lots of efforts with so many teachers in india uh, we we have got better success rate than what je is doing okay why uh, it's not just this question there are five to six ambiguities in the same paper right so i'll bring forward all those things right and second important request is don't copy the institute key right there are reputed institutes which come up with uh, a key uh, immediately after the exam is over there is a rat race to give the key first Uh, it it's not the first key that is important it's the accurate key that is more important if everyone has sat down properly including the je people and the uh, famous institute people sat down properly and seen the question with uh, no bias right then they would have realized that the answer is not solvable it is dependent on the distance of that eye okay so uh, just because institute a gives 3 institute b gives 4 then to please everyone or just to make sure that there is uh, no uh, uh, demand from different people just give every key right so 3 or 4 or 5 or whatever nonsense even i have, I have my students have told me that there were keys where 8 was also an answer thank god je did not copy that also okay so they should have an independent opinion and own up to your mistakes we all commit mistakes even on this channel whenever some typos are there and we put up a disclaimer saying that this is wrong and this is what has been pointed out by the students okay now even after doing all this please understand as a student there will be questions of this kind in the future also human errors are always possible so what's the advice that should be given to the students in order to um, maybe you can say uh, overcome such uh, questions especially at the start of the exam you need to stay calm and leave such questions remember even though bonus marks was finally awarded my students have suffered a lot in this particular uh, question paper because all the bonus marks will not bring back the time that was wasted in this uh, question during the exam by the students good students actually investigated from oblique viewing okay right so please make sure i just want to give you an analogy so that it stays with you right so a simple rule of competitive exams is in a test of je kind right remember at times well left is also a good move right i have just depicted a test match 
to the JE test also right here so that it stays with you people. So leaving a ball in a cricket test match is a good move, okay? So that later you can score on easier challenges, okay? So same thing applies. This is not your board examinations where you'll get full marks. You're supposed to leave some ambiguous questions for which you don't have a clue. It's not a bad thing. Don't play on ego, okay, right? So one thing that, that is for sure is that you are, um, understanding will become even more clearer and my argument becomes even better what I wanted to convey through this question when you solve this previous AITS question. Okay, so try this one out. It's about a person watching a swimming pool at oblique viewing at different points and what this observer will pursue will cement my thought process about the previous question. Okay, so why the distance matters, why the position of different points of the pool will look at different uh, distances. Okay, right. So uh, please comment your answer below along with the time stack. And also I have uh, shared a link of a depiction of this from a data collected by a UK website. Okay, the link of that particular depiction of this answer is in the description below. You can check it out after having a proper try. Okay, and if you want a mathematical solution for this particular question, an alternative solution was uh, beautifully solved and posted by one of my students in the Discord server in the Ray Optics channel. Okay, so please do go there and uh, try to access that solution. And in case you are new and you don't know what is Discord, I've already made a video explaining what is Discord and how our Discord server, Physics Sergi server, is helpful so watch that video tutorial the link of those also are in the description below along with the joining link and in case you like this particular video please do check out the rest of the je advanced solution series and also the parallel series running in this channel right and watch three to four videos before your je advanced examinations per day so that you can compete with the others in uh, um, going through the concepts okay so and please do leave a like and share the content so that it spreads across gives me enough motivation to keep producing good science and physics videos and liked videos are recommended by YouTube algorithm for to uh, more people. And uh, there are more gems in JE Advanced 2020 physics paper. I'll come up with all of those before your JE Advanced 2021 question paper. Okay, so thanks for staying this long and see you in the next video.